Hi folks, welcome to the second part of our series on inexpensive um, electronics gear. And what we're going to work on today is we're going to test out the soldering iron. We're going to build up the function generator kit that all the parts are laid out here. But first, before we, we build a kit, I want to check out the iron a little bit. And one of the things I want to check out is how stable is and accurate is the temperature setting on it. Even out a little bit of temperature and um, here we go. We're going to tin this up a little bit and then put it on our thermometer and so it looks like even though it's saying 350 degrees it is more like uh, 300 degrees let's see if I put it on 400 what happens That's creeping up a little bit more. And set it back down to 350 to go down. all the parts are all laid out here so what I normally do when I build a, a, a circuit is I'll start off with the, the smallest components like the lowest components first and then build up to the tallest components and that way when you have the, the board upside down you're soldering you can push down on the components without having them falling down onto the mat so um, it just makes it a little bit easier you know, rather than having something like this holding the board up and you're trying to get a resistor in there and then turning it upside down, the resistor would tend to fall out. So, but if you do it the other way around, you do it from the, the uh, smallest component to the largest component, um, it's a, just a little bit easier to handle. So um, let's get started with that. I think this temperature should be stabilized now. And just adjust the pins in just a little bit just so you know they're more parallel to each other and then they should go into the socket no problem at all get it all lined up and push it into place yeah right. so that's the function generator all ready to go so one moment please and I'm going to get a power supply out uh, probably going to use the power supply with the kit and we're going to power this up and uh, see if it makes a reasonable signal on our oscilloscope over here so now we're going to do a quick functional test of the function generator we've got the uh, kit power supply here 
I have set it 12 volts according to the instructions and uh, we'll plug that in and then hook it up to uh, the oscilloscope over here just to see if if the thing is, is functioning. We'll do a little bit more experimentation around it using the kit's uh, oscilloscope once we get to that. Um, but let's just see if we got this thing working. One moment please. Okay, we have it powered up and it's not drawing much current at all. So uh, this amp meter here would show if it's drawing, uh, you know, over maybe uh, 5 milliamps or 10 milliamps or so because it, it's only two digits past the decimal place there. So it's drawing a lot less than 10 milliamps, uh, which is very, very economical. You could power this off a battery for quite some time, I imagine. And let's uh, then we'll probe here. This is, this is supposed to be the sine wave output. So we'll probe the sine wave output here and we'll have a look up here at the scope. Yeah, it's working just fine. And the next one here is a square wave. That's working great as well. And we can change this here, get a triangle wave. And that comes out of the same output as the sine wave. Uh, it doesn't look much like a triangle wave. Um, maybe we could, we could try a lower frequency. There we go, it's looking a bit more like a triangle wave there. Let me uh, adjust this down a little bit. There we go. all completed and parts left over so <laughs> yeah let's summarize so I had a chance to use most of the tools today from our kit and uh, the hand tools that is and they all seem to work very well uh, the screwdrivers seem to have a, a nice magnetism to them as well for helping pick up screws um, the kit was very easy to build except for putting the case together. That was just painful. Removing this stuff was, uh, I wouldn't do it again. I wouldn't bother with it. Um, but it, it's now it's done. It's all in its case. Um, it works successfully. This particular iron is, is, is great for the price and everything. It is, you know, replaceable tips on it. Temperature control worked well. Uh, it's a little bit off. I had to eventually I had to turn it up to 450 to get this solder to work. I don't think I'd have the same problem with a better solder. Um, so I'm probably not going to use this solder anymore um, now that we have this kit built. We have the other kit. I'm going to use better solder, but I'll use this iron. And um, oh, that's it. Yeah, this, this turned out very well. This stand leaves a lot to be desired. I would definitely get this soldering iron, but I would look around for a better stand than this. This this is this is just it's just horrible. Um, I can't seem to be able to make the sponge work properly. Maybe it works a bit better there. I don't know. But anyway, it, it is the stand is atrocious. Um, it does work though. It it does uh, keep the iron from hitting the bench, but uh, yeah, it's it's not very stable. It's not very sturdy and you could easily knock the iron off it um, so I, I would uh, replace the stand with something else but other than that um, so far so good we've got uh, really good iron we've got some really good tools the pliers all work very well um, I even used the strippers to strip a piece of the wire that we got in the kit and uh, everything everything is working very well so far so next time when we come back again I'm going to uh, we're going to take a look at the the multimeter and then after that we'll probably look at the oscilloscope and we'll go through the the function generator a little bit more with the oscilloscope and see how they work together and we'll carry on from there 
So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.